Welcome back to our FPS series where we continue building our FPS game. And in this video, we are going to try and make these counter terrorists roam around, and when they see you, they will be able to shoot at you. And we can obviously kill them. And of course, we need a some sort of a kill feed somewhere up here. Okay, so this is our map our counter-strike global offensive map and as we know the counter-terrorists start and spawn in this location right here so the appropriate thing to do is to make some spawning positions somewhere in here and then later we can tell our game manager to spawn our ai bots okay i'll do some points in here and i'll be right back okay i've placed a total of nine spawn points in here as we can see and now maybe we want to lift them up a little bit so we avoid having errors later on okay this is perfect and now let's tell our game manager to spawn the players every time we press this play button right here okay so the appropriate thing to do right now would be to group these into a spawning position game object so later on we can navigate through these easier so let's create a empty game object always remember to reposition this to zero and let's rename it ai spawn positions let's group all of these and let's simply drop them into ai spawn positions okay here is our game manager in here and we're gonna open it so from our previous videos i've already defined a spawn points and a ai player in here and it is back in here right as we can see so we only have two spawn positions. So what I'm going to do is now simply delete that, go into our game manager and drop in our new spawn points right here. Now we have a total of nine spawn points. And as we know, a game of Counter-Strike takes place with five players. So we're going to randomize these into five places. Okay, here is our spawn AI players function. And it's very simple. It goes from 1 to the spawn array length. And that is exactly what we don't want. So we're going to go back in here. At the headers where we say players, we're going to define a new integer value. So we're going to say public integer player amount. And we're going to default this to 5. So later on, we can spawn as many as we want. So now what we're going to do is take this player amount go back to our spawn ai players function and simply paste it in here now this will spawn only five ai players okay now let's test the code to see if it actually worked i'm going to switch back to one screen so you can see this better and i'm going to dock this scene view on the side in here okay now what we should see is five players spawn right in these points so let's see if it actually worked. And as we can tell, it did. Now, if we try and go there, give me a minute. There they are. And if you get too close, they start following you, just like zombies. Okay, now you can shoot them. And it's very satisfying to kill them. Anyway, let's keep on building our game and What's left for us to do now is to make this AI go and roam around this space in here. So if you ever played Counter-Strike Global Offensive, you might have noticed that the bots go roam around in some places and then it picks a place to make camp. So the appropriate thing to do right now would be to place some points around the map calculate the distance between the points and if the ai gets too close to the point it goes into the point and it simply just stays there so let's try and implement that i'm gonna go switch back to the default view and i'm going to create a new game object i'm going to call this camp points always remember to reset the positions to zero so it's easier to work in and now let's scatter some points around the map Okay, I've scattered some points around the map. I don't know if we can see all of them. Maybe if we tag them with a color. Anyway, here is our points. And now if a AI goes too close to the point, it will detect that it can 
go in there and camp. But the problem is, if another AI comes close and it detects it, it will also take that place and camp. So, we're gonna need another script. So, let's go back to our scripts. Let's create a new folder, call it AI, and I'm going to name this script camp point. This script will hold one boolean. And you might have guessed the boolean. I'm going to name it as public, boolean, and taken. And I'm going to default this to false. And later on, we'll define a timer in here that when this taken gets through, the timer gets activated. And if like 20 seconds pass, the AI goes from that camp point and it roams around the map. Anyway, for now, we're going to leave this to taken and we're going to make it false. We're going to go back to our spawn point. And since I'm using a simple prefab for it, I can go into that prefab and I can simply drop in that script. So now every single spawn point has that script attached to it, which is good. So now since we have this camp point script, we can easily navigate through these uh, points. So now let's go back into the AI script which is this one right here, the AI controller. And let's add a function that can roam around first, and then we'll add a function to go and camp in that place. Okay, let's create a roaming function. And to do that, we're going to define a good old public void and name it roam. The roaming will take absolutely no parameters. And all it has to do is to simply walk around the map. Now, if we tell a AI to simply walk forward, it will eventually hit a wall and it will cause it to bug out. So to prevent that, we're, we're going to cast a ray from somewhere in our body. And if that ray cast hits a wall or something, it will simply spin around and walk somewhere else. So let's do that. Let's define in here a new public vector3 raycast point. And now we have a raycast point that we can cast from wherever we want, since it's a vector3. Now let's use that raycast in here, and let's simply ask if. Well, first we need to first we need to shoot a raycast from this position. To use a raycast is quite simple. You sim you just say raycast hit, and we can name it like hit for example. Now we can use that hit and say if physics dot raycast raycast point and for the second argument we want the direction okay for the direction we can say raycast point dot forward and as we can see it does not appear in here so instead of a vector 3 we are going to define a new game object so simply passing game object raycast point and now we're gonna have a error in here that we did not define a actual position right here so to define a position we simply say raycast point dot transform dot position and it works perfectly fine and for the direction we can do the same we can say raycast point dot transform dot forward and now we are casting a ray point from this point and now in here we get to define a raycast distance as we can see in here a maximum distance so let's do that let's camp maximum distance let's also define this camp maximum distance somewhere up here and we're gonna default it to like 10 for example for now and the last thing for us to add in here is out hit and you might get an error that we misplaced the camp maximum distance with the out hit so simply swap the places and we're good now we're casting a raycast and all we want to do when this raycast returns a true function we want to rotate our ai player and to do that we're going to define another float variable so we're going to say public load and we're going to call it obstacle distance we're obviously going to default it to zero and every time this function returns a, tr a true value we're going to get a reading from the distance where we shoot the, the ray all the way over to the distance that we hit. So we can get that reading by saying obstacle distance is equal to hit dot distance. And that's it. 
if this returns a true value this will become the actual distance and if it doesn't we want obviously this obstacle distance to be zero so let's reset that to zero and now we have a function to detect obstacles that are in front of the ai so the last thing for us now to do is to make our player walk and depending on this distance it will rotate around okay now in order to make our character move around we can come up here into the fixed update and in here what we have is a character controller dot move function so we basically don't have to do anything we have a movement vector we have a movement speed and we have the time everything has been taken care of for us in the previous videos so now all we have to do is mess around with the forward movement and the right movement so we want to set those variables so since we want to move forward we want to set that forward movement is equal to as long as the obstacle distance is zero we want this forward movement to actually work okay so in order to make our player move forward we're simply going to depend on this obstacle distance so as long as this obstacle distance is zero we want our player to move so let's tell it to move let's say as long as the obstacle distance is equal to zero we want the forward movement to be one and if it's not we want the forward movement to be zero and we want the right movement to do the exact opposite so for the right movement we want to ask if the forward movement is not one so to do that we're going to ask if forward movement is equal to zero we want the right movement to be one or else it becomes zero so now only one of these will be able to function this should in theory make our ai roam around so let's not forget to execute this roam function in our fixed update and let's see if it actually works so before we play we have a raycast point that is missing from our ai prefab so let's open the prefab which is this one and let's define a brand new starting point so let's simply create a empty game object drag it where you want the raycast to be hit i'm going to drag it where the eyes are maybe a little bit further and that is our ray point so grab that ray point drop it into your ray cast point and you're good to go okay now let's see if the code has actually worked they are moving obviously they are moving maybe a little bit too quick okay the speed was a little bit too high so let's drop it down to like two let's see if it actually works okay now they're moving a little bit more normally okay now we're having a brand new problem a problem that we or should i say i didn't write my code properly and the problem is that they're all now heading into the right because this obstacle distance is greater than one as we can tell in here okay the problem is that in here we're asking if the obstacle distance is zero now let's add a some kind of a threshold in here that if this exceeds the maximum distance and by the way i removed the maximum distance in here so instead of using it in here we are going to say if the obstacle distance is greater than or equal to maximum distance we're going to tell it to move forward and if it's not that means the forward movement has become zero and if it has become zero the movement will be zero and it and if it has become zero we can begin moving right now this will still give us another error and i'll show you the error right now let's tell the maximum distance to be like five for now and we can see the new error that we're getting they just move into the right and that is exactly what we don't want we want the whole entire character to rotate so to do that instead of just doing right movement we're going to delete the right movement so instead of the right movement, we are going to try and move our mouse. And for that, we also have these two functions that are basically doing all the work for us. So all that's left for us to do is to vary these mouse X and 
the other minus my mouse X. So if we take a look at our controller, the way we're moving the character around is this piece of code. Now this piece of, of code is basically identical to this piece of code. So you might have guessed it, we have to vary this input. So let's go back into our AI controller and in here we have this mouse Y and in here we have this mouse X. So what I just said is that we need to vary this mouse Y. Now we can vary this mouse Y only when the forward movement is not being called. So the code that we're going to write is mouse Y is equal to if the forward movement has stopped, which means the forward movement is zero only then we can we can rotate our player so to rotate it we're going to tell the mouse x to rotate into the right and later we can add in a random value so it can rotate to the right and left if you choose to do so so for now we're going to tell it to rotate right and to do that i'm going to use this obstacle distance so the way i'm going to use it is by telling it obstacle distance slash 2 and if it's not, I'm simply going to tell it to not move at all. So in theory, this code now should be able to make our player, or should I say our AI, move around. So let's see if it actually worked. Let's hit play. And it does, as we can see in here. Now the players are just moving around. Okay, we probably have to introduce some random values as we can see in here because they are going into the same direction. And there we go. That's basically it for this video. That's all I have prepared. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it wasn't too long for you. And I'll see you in the next videos.